Now joining us in the studio to reflect on what it takes to drive economic reforms in Africa is Mikhail Saakashvili, the former president of Georgia. Mr. President, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank and you for inviting me. You have a very interesting story to tell in terms of the changes we saw in Georgia. But when you look at Africa today, do you get the sense that you have those images of Georgia pre-2004? Absolutely. When I was driving all the way from the airport in Lagos, uh, I had these uh, windows without lights, and I, they brought back memories of my country in the 90s. And uh, we had very similar problems, failure of infrastructure, huge problem with corruption, huge problem with uh, um, the bureaucracy and, uh, and poverty. Uh, so, so yeah, that's that's very much right. the view. Well, clearly, me. you've been able to change that. So, talk to us about the hard decision it took to move, for instance, Georgia to from a ranking of 112 to 100 to 18 in one year in the ease of doing business. No, right? actually, we are not number eight on the ease of doing business yes. in World Bank. So, actually, we moved to 137 and to number eight. But that's the, and again, if you go to the international organization, we have the world's best, uh, world's fastest customs procedure, world's short, uh, shortest. Uh, 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 red tape in terms of world's fastest registration of property, world's fastest registration of companies, world's fastest um, uh, issuing of IDs. So say if we want to get a construction permit in Georgia to build up 50 stories for skyscraper, it would take you three to five hours. It doesn't take more. Or if you uh, you know buy or sell a house, it would take five, seven, eight minutes. So it's it's a, or car, a few minutes. Right. And so passport, five minutes. It's a very interesting uh, statistics uh, there, yes, but uh, what uh, are the hard decisions that you have to take? Yeah, and actually what happen. we did, we curtailed, we did several things. 90% of regulations were scrapped. We just did, we scrapped the whole entire agencies. They were, they were there to extract money from people, not to help them. We fired the entire police force and the, the whole police yes, force. Yes, and uh, we were for a few months without almost no, no police, no traffic police whatsoever, and almost the rest of the police was also gone. But then we recruited young people, gave them new salaries, new equipment, and then basically confidence in the police grew from grew from 4% to 90, which means that they're universally loved. So the main uh, lesson is that you know we had 10% of society that was flourishing on poverty, flourishing on corruption, flourishing on people not having electricity. And what we did is that we went against the interest of this 10%. This 10%, uh, of course, they were small in numbers, but they had interest in keeping status quo, even making things worse. Right. But uh, of course, these people were not just numerically small, but they had money, they had uh, media, they had power, uh, they had all kind of leverages to uh, to get, 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 get rid of us. But somehow, that's why revolution happened, that we got rid of this 10% influence. We managed to do all these reforms. And of course, eventually, this 10% regrouped. Eventually, people, of course, get fed up with every government. So in the end, uh, my government was defeated in elections by very much the old elements. However, they couldn't touch the institutions because the institutions are already there. Right. The anti-corruption procedures are already there. Right. The people have seen the results. So the problem is that it's important to show once the results, once you have a breakthrough, once you have a positive example. And by the way, I saw in Lagos, uh, there are lots of improvement on electricity. There are some improvement on transportation lines. I was talking with government Governor Fashola here. And interesting, I mean, once you show a small difference, even small difference, because I was head of self-local self government, local self-government, that's where we started. Right. Once with, with small things like children's playgrounds, few streets lit up, a uh, few uh, buses added here and there, and then people believe you that you can deliver, then they follow. The problem is that in many democracies, one government is worse than another. And the people go on these vicious cycles, they elect new government every time, and every time they just come to steal money and leave. And then the problem is that uh, people do, do, no longer believe in democracy, so just they just sell their votes. Okay, the no government will help but us. Let's uh, sell our votes. But clearly, there must have been quite a few vested interests in the government, yeah, yeah. in yeah, sure. society generally. Yes. Talk to us about dealing with that. Yeah, well, uh, as I said, I mean, we we uh, for, there were lots of corrupt officials in Georgia, and so when we, we our government took over uh, through revolution, because people got fed up and went to the streets en masse, and there were clashes and everything. But in the end, it was more or less peaceful that we got rid of the government because army and uh, police didn't obey orders to shoot at people, well, more or less didn't obey it. To, and so, uh, so we uh, we had to go in and uh, sack, not only sack them, but some corrupt officials had to be arrested. But then they just paid back the uh, money to the budget and for uh, and then they moved on. I, my predecessor owned the biggest cell phone company in Georgia, President Shevardnadze. Now, uh, now his son-in-law was arrested. He paid, and we had, they wouldn't pay pensioners for many months. So he paid back all the areas to all pensioners of my five million co people country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was three months arrears from his uh, tax arrears. However, one th one thing we should know, keep in mind. 
for all the years of my presidency, this company, his, he kept his company. His company grew up in his capitalization five or right. six times. And, uh, and I didn't get rich. My predecessor, who was rich already, got rich during my presidency because we uh, brought in new system, which basically made the business very protected. Right. So that's the, that's the main lesson you get, that you, you, you don't reconcile yourself to this interest. Of course, these interests are very strong. They, they have a lot of low leverage, and you, you just move on with your agenda. All right, tell me about the role of the people, though. I mean, you talked about yeah. there's a, like a revolution as well to, to support this, in a sense. It, it, where, where is the voice of the people in uh, driving this change? I think it's absolutely decisive, because that's the point that, you know, people who do bad things, they're always in minority. But the problem is that the rest of society cannot unite against them. And if they cannot unite, then the small minority will always exploit the cynicism or indifference or or uh, basically uh, uh, corrupt instincts of the majority because if they don't see any but otherwise most or less every society in every country is healthy mm -hmm. so pe the main thing for people to see what's their interest their interest is to uh, sideline this corrupt interest uh, tomorrow and once people do show results that you know it's easy to do business it's easy right. to it's in the education system where they eradicate corruption that was mm -hmm. the main thing because in order to get to university you had to pay bribe everywhere um, uh, if road police no longer stops anybody, nobody pays bribes. So people started to respect institutions. Right. People started to trust uh, government or government institutions. Not, right. so long, not so much the politicians. Politicians' trust went up and now, but government as such. And when people start, and start to adopt it, their government, that's their country, it's their government, it's their, it's their right. stake in their future, then they can do miracles. Okay. And I think in our case, I mean, social control was very important because the new police cannot get corrupt because socially they're controlled. Mm -hmm. Socially, I mean, the people respect them, but they expect them to, in return, to deliver what they expect from. Right. Uh, interesting points you're making there. Okay, yeah. but let's talk a bit about the the the, the view that Africa, for instance, needs yeah. to develop itself, invest in itself, as opposed to looking outward for investments. I mean, I know a lot of foreign direct investment has flowed into Georgia, yeah, yeah. but talk to us about. You know, well, the country it's very itself, important. FDA, FDA was driving. very important, of course, in Georgia because it's the FDI-driven economy. We don't obviously have oil and gas uh, in, or in that context. But what is important that not to take blindly any advice from outside because we never did because you know there were all IMF and the others would say you do this and this or that or or else. They said no, go to hell because we know better. Uh, we feel we are uh, we with, with our hearts what right. needs to be done. And so, well, for instance, we slashed our taxes by 65 percent and. Uh, I have said you are killed. You are like you are out of program. We will never finance you again. He said, well, "Okay, give us six months." And then they saw our tax incomes went up because we legalized the economy. So it was index of reduced corruption. Uh, and you know, sometimes even some international organizations, I, of course, this is not universal. They are generally helpful, but they also have stake in keeping this system because there are lots of kickbacks, government contracts, and stuff. So it's not like they. Sometimes, most of the time, they mean well, but they don't know exactly the situation. Sometimes they don't even mean well. Some of them, some of their people. So what, it's important to know what is good for your people and to create. And you know, once we did when we decreased corruption, we really killed corruption actually because, as I said, you know, in my government we decreased tax by 65 percent. Tax collection went up 12 times, mm -hmm. and our budget overall increased uh, for all my years of my presidency up to 10 times. What it so what it meant is that when you have these kind of figures, then they say, okay, we are so happy that you delivered. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes the results. Nobody likes uh, then nobody likes to claim responsibility for failure. So in the end, it's your decision. And I think Africa has amazing potential, very vibrant society. Nigeria, I feel every when I go home in Lagos, such an amazing human potential. These people can do miracles. They are smart. They are, most of them are very well educated. They aspire to be educated. They have energy. They have amazing optimism. Optimism, that's what moves society. And so these people can really make miracles, provided that they can really uh, take hands in their, uh, believe that in their own faith, take their faith in their own hands, right. and can, uh, they will get rid of corruption. They, uh, they will, it will be a very much, much more lighted up society, I'm sure, well, we look in all senses. It. We look forward to that um, reform con taking place as well in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Uh, former President Mikhail Shakashvili of Georgia.